We at Tiny are excited to introduce to you Tiny MCE 5.8, the latest release of Tiny MCE that came out in May of 2021. We've done a lot of work on Tiny MCE to bring the 5.8 release out to you. Uh, we've fixed bugs, we've added features, and what we'd like to do today is highlight some of the key changes that we've made as we release Tiny 5.8. First and foremost is we've added Google Docs support to our PowerPaste plugin. If you're familiar with PowerPaste and the capabilities that it has when copying and pasting content from Microsoft Word, we've brought a lot of that same capability to Google Docs. When we look at the export plugin, we released the export plugin not too long ago, and when we first released it, it was listed as a beta plugin. We've removed the beta tag from the export plugin, so it's now a, a proper full production plugin within the Tiny ecosystem. Uh, next up, within the skins and icons world, we've had skins and icon packs for some of the more common design systems like a bootstrap or a material for some time. Uh, Microsoft's current design system is something called Fluent. We did not have a skins and icons pack for the current Microsoft design system. We had one for their older design system. So we have created a skin and icon pack for the Fluent design system. Moving on to some other capabilities, Tiny Drive, which is a file and image management capability we have from within our cloud platform. We've added the ability to preview PDFs. Tiny Drive could preview other types of content. Now you have the ability to preview PDFs as well. And from a UI perspective, we've added the ability for Tiny Drive to run within a dark mode if that's more in line with the look of your website. For those of you using our Tiny Comments plugin, we've added the ability to resolve a comment. In addition to simply delete it, resolve gives you some more options programmatically for what you're gonna do when the comment's resolved. And lastly, we have released a real-time collaboration capability as a part of the Tiny MCE ecosystem. Uh, it is currently in beta. It is currently only available to be run from our cloud platform, uh, but it is in open beta. So any customer who is interested can gain access to our real-time collaboration platform. So now let's go ahead and start looking at some of these capabilities in more detail. One of the most requested updates that we've included in Tiny MCE's 5.8 release is an improvement enhancement to PowerPaste that allows us to do more advanced things when you paste content from Google Docs. For those of you familiar with PowerPaste and what it can do from Microsoft Word, this brings a similar sort of experience when you're copying and pasting from a Google Doc that you're used to when pasting from Microsoft Word. It makes it very easy for you to bring content from Google Docs into Tiny MCE, uh, increases productivity, decreases the time that it takes for you to create compelling content if that content already exists in a Google Docs environment. This is part of the PowerPaste 5.5.0 release. So PowerPaste is versioned separately from Tiny. So the release of PowerPaste that includes this is 5.5.0. If you are on any of our plans whatsoever, the Essential Professional Premium Enterprise, all of those plans include PowerPaste, so this capability is available to you. So now let's go see what this looks like. To showcase the capabilities of Google Docs within PowerPaste, we're going to start with a very simple document. It's a sample document uh, that Google provides if you start playing around with Google Docs. It, it has some sample templates. And this is one of those templates. It's a lesson plan template. So you'll notice this has a, an image in it. It has text and headings with various colors, fonts, sizes, etc. It's got some images in here. And if you're used to power paste from Word, uh, what, you'll, what you would expect is that if I can copy this content, take it over to Tiny MCE and paste it, I would expect to be given the choice to keep or remove my formatting from that source document. So if I keep the formatting, what you'll see is that the fonts, the sizes, the colors, the layout of that content in, in its totality is brought over from the Google Doc. So if I look at the HTML source code underneath that, you'll notice that per what Google gives us out of Google Docs, there's, there's a whole lot of inline styling that controls the look of the various portions of that content so that it matches the look of what I got out of Google Doc. There are certainly use cases where this is appropriate. Uh, those of you who do things like LMSs where someone might be submitting a paper they've worked on, 
each individual student may have a desire to format their document in a, in a very bespoke way to their needs. So keeping formatting allows you to do that. By comparison, the other option that PowerPaste gives us is to remove the formatting. If I remove the formatting, the, the structure of the document remains the same. Things that are headings are headings, things that are lists are lists, uh, paragraphs are paragraphs, the images still come over, but if we look at the underlying HTML, you'll notice that all of that inline styling that's there in an effort to, to match the look of the Google Doc is gone. This probably makes more sense if you're doing something like a company blog or a, a product catalog where you want every single piece of content on every single page to look the same. You don't want the bespoke styling from each Google document to, to leak into the rendered content in your application. So for those cases, you have the ability to remove the formatting. Again, if you're used to our power paste capabilities from Word, it's the exact same capability. In my demo, I've been prompting the paster to tell me whether they want to keep or remove the formatting. As an implementer, you also have an option to pre-pick whether you want to keep or remove the formatting so that instead of getting this prompt that tells or gives you the option of what to do, you can just pre-select one of those so that as soon as they paste, it will automatically show up either keeping or removing the formatting based on, on your, your programmatic preferences. So that is PowerPaste for Google Docs. With the release of TinyMCE 5.8, we've made a change to our export plugin. For those of you who are familiar with our export plugin from earlier releases of Tiny, prior to Tiny 5.8, export was considered a beta plugin. With the release of 5.8, we have removed the beta tag from export. It is now a fully functional plugin supported exactly the same as any other production plugin that we offer. What the export plugin does is very simple. It creates a PDF of the content that exists in TinyMCE. We have a great many of our customers who ask us for the ability to extract the content from Tiny into some file format that they can distribute to other people. And by far, PDF is the most common one of those formats people ask for. So it is the first file format that the export plugin supports. If you are on any of our plans whatsoever, essential, professional, premium, or enterprise, all of those plans include the export plugin. So now let's take a quick look at what the export plugin itself does. To see the export plugin in action, we're going to take a piece of content that started its life as a Google Doc. Uh, I used Power Paste to paste that content out of Google Docs into an instance of Tiny MCE. And now you'll notice on the toolbar, I have this toolbar button that allows me to export the content as a PDF. When I select that option, a PDF was downloaded to my machine. And when I open up that PDF, you'll see that it is the Google Doc information that ended up in Tiny MCE, pictures, headings, all, all that stuff, line breaks, page breaks, all of that stuff remain intact once it's brought over from Tiny into the PDF format. So that is what export does. It takes the contents out of Tiny MCE and by clicking a simple toolbar button, allows you to generate a PDF of the content that you can then distribute. In TinyMCE 5.8, we've released a new skin for the Microsoft Fluent design system. If you're familiar with our skins and icons pack that is already available, we have a variety of design systems already covered in our skins and icons pack. Material from Google, Bootstrap is one, and in the past with Microsoft, there was a design system called Fluid. Recently, Microsoft has moved to Fluent as their new open source design system. So with Microsoft's move to Fluent, we felt that it was appropriate for us to create a skin and icons pack that works with the Fluent design system. If you are on any of our premium plans, Essential, Professional, Premium, Enterprise, any of those plans include your skins and icons pack. So if you have that, then you have access to this Fluent design system update. So now let's look at what that looks like in Tiny MCE. If you've used Tiny MCE in the past, you're probably familiar with Tiny's default skin. It's what you see here on the page. And if you don't have any of the premium features or you don't choose to implement any of the skins and icon packs, this is the default look you get from Tiny MCE. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to refresh this page and I'm going to load the Fluent skin. 
And what you'll notice is the whole editor adapts its look to be more consistent with the fluent user interface. And this extends all the way down to what dialogues look like, buttons look like, drop downs list look like. So it, it, it is a complete overhaul of how the editor looks in an attempt to make it fit more seamlessly into the Fluent design system. So for those of you who use Fluent, this should make it far simpler for you to get Tiny MCE to look, act, and behave like a part of the Fluent design experience. In Tiny MCE 5.8, we've made a couple of enhancements to our Tiny Drive plugin. Uh, they specifically relate to how Tiny Drive works with PDF files and also a user interface, a skin option that adds the ability to work in a dark mode. So for those of you who are programmers working in IDEs, development tools all day, it's fairly common now to see people work in a dark mode. The Mac by default offers you a light and a dark mode. We're, we're seeing more applications now providing their customers a choice. Do you want the application to run in a light mode or a dark mode? So Tiny Drive now has the ability to fit into your application's design system better by allowing you to pick a light or dark mode. The other change we made in Tiny Drive has to do with what you can do to a PDF that has been uploaded to Tiny Drive. You've been able to preview other types of files before you insert them or do things with them. We've added the ability also to preview PDFs. If you are on any of our paid plans, essential, professional, premium, or enterprise, the Tiny Drive capability is part of what you have. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at Tiny Drive in action and see these two changes. So the first thing we're going to look at is the difference between light mode and dark mode when it comes to Tiny Drive. So what we're seeing here is the Tiny Drive user interface appearing. You can see Tiny kind of hiding in the background. This particular Tiny instance is in the default look, the default theme and skin, which is a light mode. And Tiny Drive itself follows suit by being in a light mode, a light look. I'm going to switch to a different instance of Tiny MCE running here, and you'll notice now that Tiny, I've done some things to make Tiny look a little better in a dark moded application. And I've also told Tiny Drive to load in its dark mode. So if you have applications that use a dark mode in how they display themselves, you can do similar things now with Tiny Drive visually to make it blend in better to your application. Switching between the light and the dark modes does absolutely nothing to change how the product works. It simply changes the way it looks. Now the other change we talked about, which is the ability to preview PDFs, does actually change a, a set of functionality for Tiny Drive. So I've loaded a demo here from our documentation website. And in this demo, I've got a whole bunch of different file types. And what Tiny Drive has been able to do for quite some time is if I pick an image file type, I've been able to click preview and I get a preview of the image, a full size preview and I get some metadata about the image. We have added a similar capability now to PDF. So if I pick a PDF and I preview it, I can see each page of the PDF. I can zoom in, I can zoom out, I can print it if I want to print it. And again, I get a little bit of metadata about that PDF. But the big change here is that before I go to the trouble of inserting the PDF or a link to the PDF in my content, I can confirm this is the right PDF. What we heard from some of our customers in the past was they would first come to this PDF and download it. So they would do something like that and pick the download option so that they could download it and make sure it was the right PDF. So the reason we added this preview is it eliminates the need for you to do that. You can preview the PDF right here from within Tiny Drive. So these are the two changes that exist in Tiny 5.8, both a new dark mode and the ability to preview PDFs. In Tiny 5.8, we've added an improvement to our Comments plugin. Our Comments plugin, if, if you've used any tools like Microsoft Word and other online tools that allow you to comment on content, you're used to being able to highlight a, a chunk of text insert a comment, edit a content, multiple people can comment, you can put multiple comments. Our, our commenting plugin already has all those capabilities built in. A piece of capability that our customers asked us for that we didn't have was to trigger some kind of a behavior when this comment stream is done and resolved. So if you've used certain tooling, 
people go back and forth in some comments and eventually the document owner can flag this comment stream is resolved you'll, you'll typically do something like get an email notification that a, a comment stream you were involved in that got moved to resolve status in our new comments release we give you that same capability we, we allow you to implement whatever workflow you would want to have happen when somebody marks a comment as resolved the commenting capability this plugin is part of our premium and enterprise plans it is not part of the essential or professional plans so if you're on a premium or essential or enterprise level plan you have this capability in the package you have today. If you're on essential or professional and you're interested in comments, uh, talk to your account manager or our sales team and they can let you know what you would have to do to move to a plan that would allow you to do comments. So now let's go ahead and take a look at this comments capability in action. So here we are with a piece of content that already has a couple of comments in there. So the word improvements is highlighted. You'll notice with a couple of comments on this word. Uh, if you're not familiar with our commenting plugin, uh, this works as you would expect a commenting plugin to work. I can keep adding comments to this. I have the ability to go and edit and delete comments that I create. At the top of the stream of comments, we've had the ability to delete it. We've had the ability to edit it but we've added the ability to resolve a conversation. Again, the big difference is delete, we'll just delete it, it's gone. Nothing else will really happen. Resolve, when you pick resolve, it's going to first ask you if you wanna resolve this because once it's resolved, you can't undo that action. From a UI perspective, it doesn't really look any different than deleting the, the conversation. They're, the comments are gone. The big difference here is really what happens in code behind this. You now have the ability to be notified via code that this stream, this conversation was resolved. And then you as the developer can do whatever the appropriate set of actions are when a, a comment or conversation or stream of comments is resolved. So if you wanna send emails, if you wanna update a database notifying, you know, keeping track of the metadata of when these things were resolved, et cetera, you, you can do whatever you need to do the comments plugin will notify some code that you write, and then it's up to you to take the appropriate action. So that is the ability to resolve comments. Another exciting change that's come out in TinyMCE 5.8 is a capability we refer to as real-time collaboration. If you are used to working in certain online toolings like a Google Doc, it gives multiple people the ability to work on a single piece of content simultaneously. And that is exactly what our real-time collaboration plugin allows you to do. It, it is by far one of the most requested features we have seen over the last couple of years. Uh, people are getting more and more used to working in these collaborative ways. Uh, and they want the ability to empower their authors to be able to work in real time on this content. They, they believe that it'll get the content created more efficiently, uh, more accurately. And so, so we, we have worked very hard to bring this capability to market. Uh, one of the things that we have worked very hard on in our real-time collaboration implementation is to make sure that the security needs of a business or a SaaS platform are kept in mind because there, there is an, an interaction between multiple people using the real-time collaboration tooling in Tiny and a service or server sitting in the background. So making sure that the security needs of businesses are met while we, we provide these kinds of capabilities to our customers. If you are a premium or enterprise customer of ours, you have access to the real-time collaboration product. If you are on an essential or professional bundle, you do not, but certainly your account manager or our sales team would be more than happy to provide you with details on how you could add real-time collaboration to the list of things you use within Tiny. So now let's see real-time collaboration in action. I've got a page up here. This page has Tiny MCE running in it with the real-time collaboration demo running. Uh, I am logged in as one user and you'll notice that a second user is here. And as that other user starts typing in the system, I see in real time what they're typing. So even if they are making mistakes, which the person doing the typing on the other end has done a couple times there, uh, I'm seeing everything that's happening. And when, when they're creating content changes, I am seeing it in real time. 
I get a little cursor. I can hover over the cursor and I can see who the person is that's putting this content in. Likewise, if I were to come in here and I were to start typing, the other person would see my new piece of content in there. They would get a similar cursor. And if they were to hover over that cursor, they would be able to see who the other person is putting in content in real time. So obviously, if there were more than two people, you would see additional people that show up up here. So you'd get a list of the initials of all the people collaborating on the content at the same time. And the cursor will show up for all the people who are not you. So you can see where they're putting content into the system. And that is how real-time collaboration works. Uh, you will notice here real quickly at the top of the page, this is a, a demo that's running on our public website. So if you want to play around with real-time collaboration with a colleague of yours, if you come to this page, you will get a URL. You can copy that URL by simply clicking on it. Send that to a coworker. They'll be able to bring up the same page. The usernames here are just made up usernames. Everybody gets assigned a unique made up username. But you'll be able to see people collaborate in real time on content, just as I've done in today's demo. We thank you for taking time today to learn more about Tiny MCE 5.8 and the many enhancements and new capabilities we've added to the product. For more information about anything you saw today, you can certainly visit our documentation at the website listed on the screen. If you'd like to experiment with some of these capabilities without first having to download and install many of the capabilities we talked about today, you can use TinyMCE Fiddle. If you go to the URL you see here and stick to one of the cloud distributions of Tiny, you'll be able to play around with a lot of this capability without first having to download or install any of it. Lastly, if you're not currently a customer or you're on a plan that doesn't include some of the capabilities that you're interested in, you should reach out to our sales team. We have a contact us form. Uh, the, the URL is listed here and our sales team can help you understand what it would take to upgrade to getting some of these new capabilities. Again, thank you for taking the time and we're really excited about TinyMCE 5.8.